proximity to Tony Ramos and put my hands on his head. Uh, he's not feeling very good, right? Because you put your life into something and it doesn't go your way. And we're all competitors here. He seemed, um, I guess, upset. We just in here. He was in here a few minutes ago with the situation here and how it was handled and 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 who was going to coach who. And um, I guess when was that stuff discussed amongst you guys? about if this happened, who would be where? Uh, this is a situation that I am just aware of, of his comments, all right, first of all. Second of all, um, corner, when you corner a guy, you're not in his corner for matches, you're in his corner for his life. I've been in that guy's corner since the day he walked on campus. Have been and always will be. Um. When was it, was it discussed who would um, be in the corner physically in, in the wrestling match if they met? It was discussed that I would be in his corner, and I was. Tommy said he was lied to. How was he lied to? Uh, about the corner situation. I don't see it that way. Here's what I see. I see two guys after the same thing. They're both Hawkeyes. They're both vital to our program. Because of the Hawkeye Wrestling Club, they've had opportunities to pursue something that's the pinnacle of the sport. And when you're talking about uh, things that maybe um, unravel a little bit, um, maybe it's easy to go the sour grape route. All right, maybe that's easy. Um, when you're accusing someone of lying and, 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 and things that are not true, um, you know, I, I have a hard time uh, believing that that's true. When the bottom line is, is since day one when that guy walked on campus, he's been my guy, just like every other guy upstairs in that wrestling room. Eligibility or members of the Hawkeye Wrestling Club. We give our soul to those guys equally. And you know what? There's, there's a lot to be said for you get what you earn. That's been thrown around a lot with the Terry video. And you know what? You do get what you earn. And the bottom line is, is that we had two guys in wait, and I am very happy for Dan Dennis, and I am down about Tony Ramos. I'm as down about Tony Ramos as I am about Brett Metcalf. And if Tony Ramos wins that wrestling match, then I am extremely happy for Tony Ramos, and I am as down about Dan Dennis as I am about Brett Metcalf. And it's really that simple. When, when did you, um, or, or anyone at Iowa, first contact Dan and you know try to maybe ask him to come back in wrestling, or how did it come about? Dan Dennis, when he left our program, he has made several, and I said this when I was walking through the mix zone, uh, he has made several trips to Iowa City. He's not a stranger here. He's my guy, all right? He's a Hawkeye. And uh, whether he went to California or wherever he ends up, he's our guy. And he was welcome in our room uh, 100%. And uh, we, we tried to get him here uh, full time several times. And uh, you know, he just felt like it was something that he had to do to get into coaching. And then he got committed. He started developing relationships like coaches do. It was hard for him to leave California, all right? But you know what? Every four years, there's the Olympic Games. And 2016 came around, and he had an opportunity. You think for Tony, the proximity to, to losing is kind of, the emotions are so raw. Do you think that's contributing to the, his comments a little bit? I can't speak for him, but I know he's hurting. But I don't know what reasons there are for that. that that's not um, something that I focus on. I focus on the message to Tony Ramos is, it's come talk to me. All right, I haven't even talked to him. I got ambushed. I got ambushed here. But I'm calm and I'm cool because the message is, is that, you know what? I'm in your corner. You know, it's more about being in the corner of a match. It's about being, you know, with you every step of the way. I mean, I, when I think of Tony Ramos, I don't think of, you know, the Rio, Rio 2016 trials. I think of, I mean, a whole host of emotions come in. And it's, it's about development and the things that he should be really proud about. He said uh, he's moving on, he's done here. Do you think that, that this is salvageable? 
Uh, it's, it's salvageable from a relationship point of view because I don't give up. Um, but, you know, this is not the first time that I've heard that he would like to go and coach closer to the Chicago area. So it's not the first time I've heard that. He's a valuable commodity as a coach. I mean, there's programs out there that Tony Ramos is good with kids. He's good with, with his coaching. He's good with mentorship. And uh, that's one of the reasons why when, when, when our guys graduate and they're at that level, not all of them stick around. And there's a reason why they don't stick around. And then there's a reason why the ones stick around is because we make it easy for them to stick around. He was an asset to us. He's a mentor. He's a big part of our program. We call it an extension of our coaching staff. The NCAA rules say they're not coaches. They can't be coaches, but they can still be an extension of our coaching staff just because they're rubbing elbows with, with our eligible guys every day. That's the genius of the Hawkeye <coughs> Wrestling Club, and that's the genius of these clubs around the country. And you know who pioneered that? University of Iowa with Roy Carver and Gary Kirtlemeyer and Dan Gable. That's who pioneered that. This isn't something where, you know, we're the, you know, we're leading the charge. There's a, there's a serious competition out there for getting guys like Dan Dennis or Tony Ramo. So, no, it's not surprising to me that um, he would be looking to better his family, you know, in a professional coaching position. How about Dan Dennis? I mean, what can you say about him, his story? Um, I said it in the mix zone. I don't remember seeing you there, Mike. Uh, but the one thing that I said is, I'm just calling you by name so people know that we know each other. <laughs> we got a good relationship, right? Um, but the one thing I said is he lives his life how he wants to live it, and that's something that a lot of people gravitate toward. People like that. You know, when you can say what you want to say and uh, you're unfiltered, and then you can go live how you want to live. And you know what? Um, it's not a sympathy thing. It's, uh, it's a choice by him. And that's what I love about it. And you know what? We all march to the beat of a different drummer. And, uh, you know, those two guys are opposites. And I've talked about that as well. Tony Ramos is motivated by things that Dan Dennis isn't. Dan Dennis is motiva motivated by things that Tony Ramos isn't. But both those guys helped our program. And there's no, there's no, uh, there's no way around that when you look at the results. Results of our guys at those two guys particular weight class. And I'm talking specifically Corey Clark and Thomas Gilman. And then Brandon Sorensen and on up the line up because mentorship is friends. Tony, like Tony seemed to say that other athletes in the Hawkeye Wrestling Club, other coaches maybe favored Dennis at times as well, that Terry was the one that was kind of on his side. Had you seen anything like that? And I this don't see first. anything like that. I know that our co here's the great thing about having the Hawkeye Resident Club is is you got elite athletes and there's not 40 elite athletes in there. There's there's in our case there's five and one of them had double knee surgery. All right, and so we had four guys in this tournament. And what happens is our coaches they gravitate towards certain guys, and Terry's responsibility became Medcalf and Ramos. You know, my responsibility was more Telford and Dennis. And then Morningstar factors into it. And, uh, you know, and, and Ben Burhau, obviously, with the relationship with Telford being a heavyweight, you know, he was with Telford. Um, you know, um, there's just a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that just slide into place there. Would you like Tony Ramos to stay here and, and keep training your feet here? Tony Ramos has an open door, and he knows that. And that's maybe my emotion and appeal, but Hey, you know, I'm not going to talk to Tony Ramos through this doggone press conference. I'm answering your questions because Chris Brewer came up with an ambush, and here I am. I mean, anything else? Yeah, just one question. Lear learning all this, when will you reach out? Sorry, will you reach out? To <coughs> uh, I'll reach out to him as soon as possible. Like, like, I mean, when I'm walking upstairs, and I get yeah. my phone wherever it is. It's out here. Um, I spoke to his brother. This, you know, being upset, it's a competitive, competitive thing we do here. Extremely competitive and extremely personal. So, but, you know, let's, let's move on.
Okay, thanks, Coach.